Hi everyone. Today in this video we are going to discuss about important concepts of antibacterials. What are the antibacterials? Antibacterials can be classified into mainly four categories based on their target of action. A group of drugs are going to inhibit the cell wall synthesis within the bacteria. So we have so many types of drugs like the penicillin, cephalosporins and other beta lactam antibiotics. All these are inhibiting the cell wall synthesis within the bacteria. Similarly, another group of drugs are going to inhibit the protein synthesis within the bacteria. Again, we have a number of category of drugs within this class. For example, tetracyclines, macrolides, aminoglycosides and other drugs like chloramphenicol. All these drugs are going to inhibit the protein synthesis within the bacteria. And third class of drugs are going to inhibit the folic acid synthesis as well as utilization. So we have sulfonamides and related drugs. And finally, if you have the drugs are going to inhibit the DNA synthesis, we have fluoroquinolones, which are going to inhibit the topoisomerase enzyme. In this way, antibacterials can be classified into four types of categories. And apart from these four classes, we have another type of drugs like metronidazole, which is an anti-amoebic as well as an antibacterial. Similarly, if you have the drugs are going to produce the sterilization, for example, polymyxins are going to act as an antibacterials. But many of the antibacterials are going to fall under these four categories. So now let us see what are the different types of drugs that can be classified under these categories. The first one is the drugs inhibiting the cell wall synthesis. So here the drugs can be classified into two types. First one is a beta lactam antibiotics and second one is a peptides. So first let us see what are the beta lactam antibiotics. So these antibiotics are having the beta lactam ring which can be of four types, penicillins, cephalosporins, carbapenems and monobactams. All these are the beta lactam antibiotics which are going to inhibit the cell wall synthesis within the bacteria. Here we can identify these drugs based on their suffix or prefix. For example, penicillins can be identified by the suffix silin. So we have drugs like penicillin G, penicillin V. Similarly, anti-staphylococcal penicillins like methicillin, cloxacillin, dicloxacillin. Extended spectrum antibiotics like ampicillin and amoxicillin, anti pseudomonal penicillins like the piperacillin, ticacillin, carbenicillin. All these are having the suffix silin, which are the penicillin antibiotics. In our previous video, we have discussed in detail about the classification of beta lactam antibiotics. Similarly, cephalosporins can be identified by the prefix cepha. For example, we have the drugs like cephalexin, cephadroxyl, ceftagidim. Cephotaxin, Cephixim. In this way, we have so many types of drugs which are the cephalosporins. And third one is the carbapenems. Carbapenems are having the suffix penum. We have meropenum, etapenum, doripenum. And finally, monobactams include only one drug that is the estrionum. In this way, we have four types of beta lactam antibiotics which are inhibiting the cell wall synthesis within the bacteria. Beta lactam antibiotics like penicillins are working by three steps. Initially, they are binding to one of the protein, penicillin binding protein, by which they can attach to the bacterial cell wall. Then they are going to inhibit the cross peptidation between the n acetyl muramic acid chains, thereby they inhibit the cell wall synthesis. And finally, they can also release the few of the autolytic enzymes, which will cleave the cell wall of the bacteria. In this way, penicillins and other beta lactam antibiotics show bactericidal action. So these beta lactam antibiotics produce a few of the important side effects like the hypersensitive reactions. They can also produce some delayed serum sickness and other hypersensitive reactions. And a uh, few of the drugs like the ampicillin can produce a maculopopular rash which is a hypersensitive reaction. Similarly, these beta lactams are metabolized by penicillinases. These penicillinases are two types beta lactamases as well as amidases but most of the penicillins are cleaved by beta lactamases. So in order to prevent this metabolism, we can use the beta lactamase inhibitors like the clavulanic acid, sulbactam and tazobactam. These drugs can be combined with the penicillins in order to prevent their metabolism and development of the resistance. Similarly, another type of uh, drugs which are inhibiting the cell wall synthesis are the peptides. We have three types of peptides, glycopeptides, lipopeptide, and glycolipopeptide. So one of the glycopeptide is the vancomycin. Similarly, lipopeptide is the daptomycin. 
and glycolipopeptide is the telavancin. These three are the peptide drugs which are again inhibiting the cell wall synthesis within the bacteria. Second class of drugs are the drugs which are going to inhibit the protein synthesis. We have drugs like tetracyclines, aminoglycosides, chloramphenicol, macrolides. So these are the four important category of drugs which are going to inhibit the protein synthesis. Tetracyclines can be identified by the suffix cycline. So we have examples like the tetracycline, chlortetracycline, oxytetracycline. These drugs are going to inhibit the attachment of the tRNA to the A site of the bacterial ribosome. Similarly, aminoglycosides can be identified by the suffix mycin. We have drugs like streptomycin, kenamycin, neomycin, nitylmycin. And these drugs are going to inhibit the codon anticodon pairing. And third drug is the chloramphenicol, which inhibits the transpeptidation within the protein synthesis. And this drug is restricted for the severe bacterial infections because chloramphenicol produces some gray baby syndrome when it is given to the infants. And it can also produce a hypoxia in the adults because of this chloramphenicol is restricted for the severe infections. And finally, macrolides can be identified by the suffix thromycin. So we have the drugs like erythromycin, telithromycin, clarithromycin. And these drugs are going to inhibit the translocation within the bacteria. Similarly, other drugs include clindamycin, puromycin and quinopristin plus dalfopristin. All these drugs again inhibit the protein synthesis within the bacteria. Clindamycin is not effective against the Clostridium difficile infections. And this organgem can produce a pseudomembranous colitis which can result in the diarrhea in the patients. So clindamycin is not effective towards the Clostridium difficile infections. Similarly, puromycin is one of the drugs which is going to produce a premature termination of the protein synthesis leading to formation of inactive proteins within the bacteria. And finally, quinopristin and dalfopristin are the two drugs which are given in a combination at a ratio of 30 to 70 to inhibit the bacterial protein synthesis. And we have another drug like linezolid, which is again inhibit the formation of the 70S ribosome within the bacteria, thereby it can inhibit the initiation steps within the protein synthesis. So all these uh, seven category of drugs are acting on the protein synthesis within the bacteria. Third category of drugs are the drugs inhibiting the folic acid synthesis as well as utilization. So we have two types of drugs like sulfonamides and trimethoprim. Sulfonamides are going to inhibit the folic acid synthesis by inhibition of the dihydroterate synthetase enzyme which is responsible for the conversion of uh, PABA into the folic acid. Similarly, trimethoprim is going to inhibit the dihydrofolate reductase enzyme which is responsible for the reduction of the folic acid into the tetrahydrofolate. In this way, these two drugs are going to inhibit the folic acid synthesis and utilization and these drugs are particularly used to treat the urinary tract infections. Fourth category of drugs are drugs inhibiting the DNA synthesis. We have one category of drugs, fluoroquinolones. They are ending with the fluoxacin. These drugs are going to inhibit that DNA gyrase enzyme, which is also called as topoisomerase 2. And uh, they also inhibit the other enzyme topoisomerase 4. These two enzymes are going to relieve the topological strain during the DNA replication, which is going to be blocked by fluoroquinolones. So we have drugs like ciprofloxacin, norfloxacin, ofloxacin, moxifloxacin, all these drugs ending with the floxin or the fluoroquinolones. Now with these basic concepts, let us discuss few of the important points within the antibacterials in a question as well as answer format. First one, which of the following drugs are chemically not compatible? Options are P, clavulanic acid, Q, streptomycin or ampicillin, S. Ciprofloxacin. So here we have to select the two drugs which are chemically not compatible. A. P and S. B. Q and R. C. R and S. D. P and R. So what is the right answer for this question? So here right answer is the Q and R. That is streptomycin as well as ampicillin. Streptomycin is an aminoglycoside antibiotic and ampicillin is a extended spectrum penicillin. So these two are chemically not compatible. 
So here if we see the other options, clavulanic acid is a beta lactamase inhibitor which is given along with the penicillins. So it is compatible physiologically as well as chemically. And we have few other drugs like uh, amoxiclav which is a combination of amoxicillin plus clavulanic acid combined within a same formulation. But in case of streptomycin which is a aminoglycosid antibiotic and because of the amine groups it is a basic compound and ampicillin because of the penicillin it is having the free carboxylic acid so it is acidic in nature. So when we combine the streptomycin and ampicillin this base and acid can form a complex and they form a salt which results in the loss of activity. So streptomycin and ampicillin should not be combined within the same solution because they are not compatible chemically. But physiologically they can be given because streptomycin is one of the aminoglycosid antibiotic which is having the poor absorption into the bacterial cell. Then when we give the amoxicillin, amoxicillin is a penicillin which inhibits the cell wall synthesis within the bacteria. So when the cell wall is not synthesized, streptomycin can easily enter into the bacterial cell. In this way, penicillins can increase the absorption of aminoglycosides into the bacterial cell by inhibition of the bacterial cell wall synthesis. So physiologically this combination is beneficial but chemically these are not compatible therefore they should not be combined with any same formulation. And finally ciprofloxacin is a fluoroquinolone antibiotic which forms complex with few of the antacids which reduce the absorption of fluoroquinolones. Second one Cotrimoxazole is a combination of sulfamethoxazole and trimethoprim at a ratio of a 4 is to 1, b 1 is to 4, c 1 is to 5, d 5 is to 1. So here what is the ratio of sulfamethoxazole and trimethoprim when they are given in a combination as cotrimoxazole. This cotrimoxazole is used to treat the urinary tract infections as well as it can also be used to treat the pneumonia particularly in the immunocompromised patients. So here what is the ratio of mixing of sulfamethoxazole and trimethoprim? The right answer is 5 is to 1. So sulfamethoxazole is given at 5 parts and trimethoprim is given at 1 part. For example sulfamethoxazole can be given at a dose of 400 mg then trimethoprim is combined at 80 mg. So you can see that ratio is 5 is to 1. Otherwise we can also use the double dose where 800 mg of the sulfamethoxazole can be combined with the 160 mg of trimethoprim. So this strength is called as double strength because we have increased the dose of both sulfamethoxazole and trimethoprim by twice. Third one, which of the following drugs action is reduced by co-administration of sodium bicarbonate? Options are A. Amoxicillin, B. Ciprofloxacin, C. Methinamine, D vancomycin. So here we have to identify the drug whose action is going to be interfered with the sodium bicarbonate. What is sodium bicarbonate? Sodium bicarbonate is an antacid as well as urinary alkanizer. So this drug may interfere within the stomach or at the urinary tract. Then we have to select the drug which is acting at the stomach or GI tract. So here among these listed drugs which drug is acting on either stomach or urinary tract. So by analyzing like this we can find the right answer as methinamine. Methinamine is one of the drug which is also called as urotropin. This drug is used to treat the urinary tract infections. But this drug just acts like a prodrug. It is not directly producing any antibacterial activity. This methinamine is going to be fragmented within the acidic pH. When the pH is less than 5.5 this methinamine can be fragmented to produce the formaldehyde and ammonia. Here the formaldehyde mainly shows the antibacterial activity. That's why methinamine can be used to treat the urinary tract infections but we have to maintain the urinary pH less than 5.5 in order to release the formaldehyde and to show the antibacterial activity. But when we give the sodium bicarbonate what will happen? Sodium bicarbonate a urinary alkanizer which can increase the pH such that it can inhibit the release of the formaldehyde. So when we give the sodium bicarbonate, it can reduce the pharmacological activity of methinamine because formaldehyde is not released. That's why in order to increase the action of methinamine, ascorbic acid is co-prescribed because ascorbic acid can increase the pH such that the pH is less than 5.5 and methinamine is fragmented to produce a formaldehyde to show the antibacterial activity. 
In this way, whenever methanamine is given, we should not use the urinary alkanizers like the sodium bicarbonate. Fourth one, which of the following drug can produce rhabdomyolysis as one of the side effect? A. Erythromycin B. Chlortetracycline C. Linezolid and D. Daptomycin Rhabdomyolysis is one of the muscle disorder where muscle fiber is slowly lost resulting in the muscle weakness, muscle pain and here we have to identify which type of antibacterial can produce the rhabdomyolysis. So the right answer is daptomycin. All we have seen daptomycin is a lipopeptide which can produce the rhabdomyolysis as one of the important side effect. So daptomycin can produce some muscle pain and muscle fiber dissolution and muscle weakness. These side effects can also be produced by if you have the anti-hyperlipidemic agents like the statins. So statins can increase the side effects of the daptomycin.